statements expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect those of WWDB, its staff, or management. You are listening to In the Know with David O., informative, substantive, intelligent talk radio on 860 AM WWDB. And now, your host, Philadelphia Councilman David O. Good afternoon. It's Tuesday and time for In the Know with David O. I'm Councilman David O. It is my pleasure to uh, join you here today every Tuesday, 2 to 3, to uh, bring you some uh, interesting perspectives, some some expertise uh, from decision makers and uh, people in our community that are doing positive things. Um, this week, we're going to hear from Gabriela watson Alrazo. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but she is a independent filmmaker, producer, and educator. She just completed one of her documentary films, and so whether she's teaching at Temple University or making a film or talking to folks um, and doing things on an international level, Gabriella um, will be telling us about all those things, uh, and uh, and I hope you will uh, find a lot uh, that you can gain from that. Um, then we're going to hear from House of Hamill, two musicians. Uh, they met 10 years ago, and lo and behold, um, they both have bands, by the way, but they started their own band, the two of them. And and so they uh, have House of, uh, of Hamill, which is kind of like Celtic rock, Celtic folk rock, kind of, kind of, maybe some other things too, we'll find out. But uh, we're going to hear from them, uh, uh, Brian and Rose. Uh, they uh, were finalists in the uh, uh, PHL Live Center Stage 2016 Country Folk Genre. And uh, after you are done listening to them, well, you will learn how to play the guitar. I mean, well, if you want to, from the convenience of your home or your office, you could do it online for free or for really a minimum level of contribution, like a dollar a month, you know, and, and it could go a little higher. But, you know, the whole secret is in knowing how to learn and having someone teach you in a way that, uh, well, uh, leads you to success early. And that is uh, Robert Swift. Uh, Swift Guitar Lessons. Well, let me start by thanking our show sponsor, Weinerman Pain and Wellness, the wonderful work they do in bringing people back to a full, healthy life or a life that is certainly uh, rewarding. Uh, sometimes it's very challenging when people get hurt. Um, they need to uh, resume as much of a life as they can, hopefully a full life, but uh, for both uh, mental and physical reasons, uh, rehabilitation uh, is so important. Um, I thank all our advertisers, and, uh, you know, we have a new advertiser, um, and you'll hear their commercial. It's all about cheesesteaks, right? So Philly is really uh, the home of some great cheesesteaks, and uh, so, you know, don't turn away when the commercials come on. Check out our sponsors. Listen to what they have to say. Um, by the way, um, you know, August 17th, um, that's coming up. August 17th is... First Responder Appreciation Day here in Philadelphia. And so, you know, take a little note. If you see a police officer, a firefighter, you know, paramedic, uh, someone in emergency medicine, just just say thank you. Thank you for the work you do in, in helping uh, us all. And we've asked community groups to sponsor something, and uh, my office is uh, organi- organizing a few things and kind of keep, keep track of uh, what's happening, and we'll give you more information about that. But, yeah, let's thank our first responders, a tough job that they do and do so well. Um, So let me tell you about my first guest. Um, She was born in Peru. Uh, She grew up in Brazil, and now she makes Philadelphia her home. Her name is Gabriela Watson Arazo, and uh, you can find her at Temple University, the uh, School of Film Art Media. Uh, and she got her uh, Master of Fine Arts there, and uh, she is working on projects, and one of them is going to debut uh, at the Black Star Film Festival uh, this uh, this uh, coming uh, week, right? Correct. This yes. Sunday. This Sunday, and uh, it's, it's uh, at the International House, which is um, on Chestnut Street, right? Yes. Do you know the address? It's 34 in Chestnut. 34 in Chestnut is good enough. I know where that is. But, yeah, you can uh, look it up. We'll get you the the, the, uh, the exact address. Uh, Gabriella, welcome to the show. 
Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much for inviting me, and I'm very uh, happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got interested in film? Because you're not a newcomer. You were doing stuff in Brazil, and you came over to uh, Philadelphia. But but what what attracted you to uh, television and film? Absolutely. So I think that's a very interesting story. I uh, I got attracted after I saw the film Spike Lee film Malcolm X. Mm, okay. And I thought it was so powerful and speaks so much to be about the untold story of black people. Mm-hmm. You know, very different from what I saw in the you know school books and right. that kind of stuff. And I felt like that that uh, that was something that I wanted to pursue. You know, get to know more about who. Who, who I, I am. Yes. And just make people feel connected. Yes. You know, and feel empowered by now, film. Now, were you much of a reader? Did you like to read? I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't really like it myself. So I love mm-hmm. film, you know, because any time I could watch a film rather than read a book. Like, <laughs> I love books. I love to read. I just don't seem to have time for it. But, I, you know, a beautifully presented or powerfully presented film is uh, really uh, kind of convenient for me. I really like it. I, I do read, but um, film works a lot better for me. Yeah, I understand. A lot of people feel the same way, mm-hmm. and that's why uh, one of the good positive things of multimedia, they really engage people in a whole different level. Yeah, I mean, it's tough enough to write. That's a whole art in of itself, and, you know, I'm only kidding. I love to read. I don't have much time for it. But, you know, the presentation of a story through film, uh, so technical, lighting, you know, the technology, the artistry, you know, the actors, the scripts are very complicated. Um, uh, yes. So, so, so mm-hmm. what, what do you – how do you focus on that in, in, in what you're doing? Because you're doing documentary films right now, um, and uh, I suppose you may stick with that or do other things. But what are the key elements that you're really trying to focus on in presenting the stories you're presenting? Okay, well, I definitely have a passion for writing and directing, Mm -hmm. so that's my ultimate goal. Yes. And I actually, I have some stories, fiction stories, that Mm. uh, I'm, you know, working on a script. Like you said, it's a a long-term process, you know, you script, you you really need to make sure you got it right. Right. So I'm working on my script and working on directing uh, actors and lighting is it easy to direct actors? It's not easy. It's not easy, she says with a smile. <laughs> uh, are you thinking about things in particular? What's, what's tough about directing people? Uh, it's about the, the thing with film is that as a director, you need to direct not only the actors, mm. but all the technical aspects, like you said. Yes. And uh, all the people's different uh, humors yes. and different styles. So it's a very uh, intense exercise of dealing with different people. So it, it but it requires training. The much that you do, yes, the the better you become. Mm. Well, I I know that like in my time in the military, we went through a lot of training just for a young officer to be able to tell other soldiers what to do and make sure it's done correctly. Um, they invest heavily, you know, in kind of like a, you know management uh, training. In the military, and uh, it doesn't seem like there's that much training for, for example, employers. You know, you start a business and you learn kind of, you know, a little bit here and there by trial and error, you know, if it works or not. But but there are schools that will teach you about the film and media arts, um, and you are you are really uh, part of that in in that you're you're teaching uh, at the at Temple University. Yes, correct. I'm a young scholar. Uh, the MFA program, the difference between uh, MFA and other film filmmaking programs is that it, you have uh, a training, like you said, yes. in teaching undergrad at the same time that you perfect your craft, mm-hmm. you perfect your filmmaking s- skills. You, we also um, had the opportunity in this program at Temple to teach undergrad as teaching assistants and lately as adjuncting, so being responsible for teaching the course in itself, right. which was a great experience for me. Mm, how important would you say is it for um, aspiring filmmakers and others to go to school? 
Uh, for me personally, because I knew I wanted to be to become an instructor, mm. that was a key element to right. des- to decide to go to MFA program. Yes. Uh, but for many filmmakers, as long as they practice, yes. they become very successful. Mm. So it, rep- it depends on the approach that you want to pursue. Right. Now, tell us about your kind of focus as a filmmaker, because right now you've kind of focused on the the African diaspora and and uh, and and from a woman's perspective, uh, how did you kind of come to that? Sure. Well, you know, like you uh, were telling the uh, the audience, I have this multicultural background. Yes. Uh, I my parent my family is from Peru. I, you know, born and raised in Brazil. Uh, have this passion with uh, black American films and yes. felt identified with them. And, you know, the mass culture also makes you so uh, connected with the American culture. Yes. Um, so in many ways, I feel um, a lot of similarities. What do you want to convey in your movie? For example, you, you, your first uh, film, uh, We African or Afro-Peruvians, uh, Nosotros uh, Afro-Peruanos, um, that's the best I can do. Uh, that was 2012. And now you have another film, uh, which is, uh, oh, what is the name here? Balba Flowers. But, but they're really both kind of focus on the, the African experience, uh, whether in, uh, uh, Peru, Brazil, or here in the United States. And you're, and you're linking the kind of common experience. Correct. So, exactly. So, uh, as a, uh, independent filmmaker, I really, uh, I'm trying to build a body of work yes. that helps to uh, promote a lot of cross-cultural conversations. Yes. I believe that that's where my strength is. Yes. I mean, you know, my background experience and having the opportunity to travel. So I really want to uh, encourage people to think in those kind of terms. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, you know, I enjoy um, a lot of different films from a lot, of, a lot of different countries. I learn about the culture and I learn about me through the experiences of mm-hmm. people I am not, whether by, by race, gender, or occupation. I'm not in a mob, but I like the mob movies. I learned something about me watching, you know, the characters struggle through these impossible scenarios. Um, in, uh, in, your your latest film, which is going to uh, debut this Sunday, um, you brought together two teachers, one from Brazil, one from America. And what were you trying to say? Uh, what were you documenting in that film, Balba Flowers? Right. So in Balba Flowers, we are following two teachers from underserved communities, one from my hometown, Sao Paulo, Priscila, yes. and mm-hmm. other Nianza Bandelli from West Philadelphia. And the idea is to reflect on the inequality to uh, access education for minorities. Yes. For minorities here, but one thing that I like to remember is in Brazil, black people are not minority. Mm, we are majority. Yes, yes. But still we have the same issues. In other words, when you say accessing quality education, there is school, yet it is not um, high quality uh, education or it is not – equal to the level of uh, education that is offered within the within the same region is that what you're talking about yes so that so many levels different levels it's just the fact of accessing um, schools with uh, resources yes and the fact that even we, when you are in a school it doesn't speak to your identity mm-hmm. or the teacher are trying to do something different and they are they have a lot of barriers yes yes. Um, when I think about Philadelphia, for example, I think about exactly that issue, that you could have one school with art, music, orchestra, swimming pool, uh, iPads, uh, you know, um, 3D printers, and then just uh, several minutes away is another public school, another neighborhood school that uh, is so poorly resourced, no orchestra, no art, you know, barely drinkable water. Uh, oftentimes not even, you know, uh, toilet paper on a consistent level, yet they're both in the same system. Is, is that what you are reflecting on in this um, documentary? Yes, that's definitely one of the aspects that's brought out with the experience because the students, they feel the same exact way. When we're talking to them, they are conscious that 10 minutes away from the mm, schools that they leave, yes. there's a school with a whole different uh, uh, kind of resources. 
Now, one of the things you, you, you talk about in this film or you present is it's, it's not just in Philadelphia or in Sao Paulo. It's a global problem. And, and are you particularly looking at it as a global pl- a problem, more so for, for black people than for um, – like it's, not, it's really the commonality is that many of the poor communities are people of African descent and uh, they have uh, uh, less opportunity to access good quality education. Exactly. It's from, uh, it's from um, an African sense experience. Because if you take the uh, statistics mm-hmm. from whole Latin America, yes. uh, you're going to find uh, African descent in all those countries. And usually they live in the worst uh, socioeconomical neighborhoods. Yeah, so we may have, as, as I often say, you may have Mozart, but Mozart doesn't have a piano. So we never know what, what that child could be. And, um, you know, if uh, on a global basis so many potentially bright, capable people are not able to develop their full potential, and, and, and many of them are of African descent. What does that mean for people of African descent on a global basis? Exactly. It's just it's reflection of the history. It's mm-hmm. reflection of the, the present, too, yes. because there are actions that can be made today that are not based, they're not made, and it's, they're, made, they're not made based on decisions. So what are the priorities of the governments? Right. Why, why is those resources not being available at the same level than others? Those, so those are questions that we all need to ask ourselves. I also, uh, you know, uh, very much like and very curious about the fact that you present it from a woman's perspective. What are you presenting, um, you know, through a woman's perspective that is different from the traditional presentation, you know, by men? Correct. So I believe those women, they they show that uh, as as being uh, the educators, they mm-hmm. have so many roles. Mm. And sometimes they are, um, they are, uh, how do you say? They have too, many, too much to do. Mm. Yeah, they have a lot of different roles. Do you mean as uh, they're dealing, you know, as yeah. a teacher, as a professional, but as also... As mothers, as yes. community activists. Right. And their own... Um, what they want to do is is on the bottom of the list. They mm. don't even uh, as you know people. They have so little time for themselves. Right, right. Um, well, um, if people want to learn more about you and and your films, do you have a website we could tell our listeners to, to visit right now? Definitely. So the film they have it has a website mm-hmm. www.baobaflowersfilm.com. Yes. Baoba, by the way, is spelled B A O B O B, and the word flowers, Baoba flowers. Exactly. So baobaflowersfilm.com website. Though this is the website film, and I'm on fa- Facebook all the time on Twitter. Gabriella one L, Watson, Aurazo A U R A Z O. All right, uh, Gabriella Watson Arauzo, A U R A Z O. Now, uh, what does the future hold for you? You know, Sunday comes, you're debuting your film. What happens next? Ooh la la, hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, a lot more productions. I have a short film in mind that I'm mm-hmm. finishing script and want to shoot this year. Yes. Um, I'm also. Uh, looking for news in teaching. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, I definitely want to teach here in Philadelphia. So just pursuing, you know, more films and more teaching. Ah, more films and more teaching. Now, uh, the film that you are debuting, um, which uh, you filmed in Brazil as well as in the United States, uh, how did you fund that? Yes. So it's very tricky to fund to fund independent film, as yes. everybody knows. And so I did. Uh, it, w- it came from different places. Mm-hmm. The funding. So I had a, a grant uh, from Temple University. It's called Completion Grant. So it had that uh, that help. And then we we uh, did two Kickstarter campaigns, two crowdfunding campaigns. One here in uh, U.S. and other in Brazil. And also we had funding from uh, an executive producer, 
She is a civil rights. Uh, she was a civil rights activist, and she's a professor. She was. She's a former professor at Georgia State University, Dr. Derby. Mm-hmm. She also came on board as an executive producer. So it's just beautiful to see also how you know generations help each other. You know, women helping each other, and I feel blessed to have you know the blessing of such a you know figure. And so those are and. I have to say my personal resources. Yes, so yes. So those are the four main um, things. Right, the, the, the sources that you drew on in order to complete your independent film. Mm-hmm. So, right. so certainly that is another challenge. You know, people want to do something, but they don't have the resources or the tools. And 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 so um, you know it's it's uh, it's uh, encouraging that you've been able to raise a little money here, a little money there, uh, here in the U.S., overseas in Brazil, and complete your project. Um, and and I understand you're working on yet another project, which is Afro Trip. Correct. Afro Trip it's a web series that features upcoming artists mainly in Brazil. So we shot this in three different cities, so Salvador, Rio de Janeiro, and Sao Paulo. Mm-hmm. And we are getting ready to uh, start disclosing all the videos uh, online. So it's yes. primarily a, uh, a web series. So everything is going to be online accessible to everyone in the, with the same idea to uh, let people know what's going on right now in Brazil. Mm. And, and so now this focus is pretty much on the arts. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and why did you choose that uh, as a way to to reach and communicate to people? Well, there is a, first those artists sometimes they don't have space. Yes. As you know, in mainstream uh, communication. So and second, people don't from other countries they don't know. They don't have the access to get to know those artists. Right. So you're providing a platform where people can get to listen to or or, or, or see um, talented folks uh, from Brazil. Exactly. That might not otherwise uh, have that opportunity. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's that's wonderful as well. Um, for listeners who might be thinking about a career in film and television, or they might want to get involved in making their own films, what kind of advice do you have for them? Start making film right now. Mm, okay. <laughs> that sounds like good advice. How do they do that right now? Well, right now there is, you know, you know the um, uh, DSLR um, uh, cameras, digital cameras, mm-hmm. or even with the cell phone. Yes. You know that even we have feature films, narrative films shot with self with an iPhone. Mm, yes, I've heard about that. So there are no limits, and really, you know, developing a cinematic aesthetic, it's much more of a concept than of having all the paraphernalia on, you know, mm-hmm. the axis. Of course, everyone wants to have that. Right, right. But you can start with just creativity and some, some tools. The much that you train, the better you... You're going to become, and then you're going to know, okay, which path I want to go. Sounds like sound advice to me. Start early, make your mistakes right away, you know, make your adjustments, find out who you are, you know, keep uh, keep at it. Exactly. Now, um, you're going to be at uh, International Health this Sunday? I will be there. Yes. Mm-hmm. What time? What time does that kick off? It starts at 11. 11 in the afternoon? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Okay. And there are going to be it's the film it's uh, included in the short uh, program eight. So we have uh, three other films being shown after Baba, mm-hmm. and yes. then there is a Q and A that I was going to follow. Okay. So I'll be there. You'll be there for the Q and A. Exactly. And, and about what time does your film show? At 11. At 11. And what time do you uh, get up to do the Q and A? Probably. Um, Around 12.30. Around 12.30. Okay, so watch the film, do a Q&A. So everybody, if you would like to uh, get a chance to meet the director and uh, our guest today, talk to her um, and uh, watch her film and uh, maybe uh, get involved in supporting some of her projects or uh, pursuing your own career, uh, n- note it down. You know, this Sunday, International House, uh, 34th and Chestnut, um, they have a, uh, a movie screening uh, area there, 
and uh, you can uh, keep an eye out for Balba Flowers and uh, director Gabriela Watson Arazo. Yes, I'm going to check the address mm-hmm. so we can make sure it's uh, people will arrive there. Okay. Well, listen, 34th and uh, Chestnut is good enough. They'll figure it out. Make sure you get to the right place. So, listen, thank you so much for being on our show. Uh, and listen, to our listeners, stay tuned because we will be right back with House of Hamill. You are listening to In the Know with David O. Informative, substantive, intelligent talk radio on 860 AM WWDB. Here at Sunny Stainless Cheese Steaks, we have the utmost respect for the founding fathers of our fair city's most celebrated sandwich. But we also understand the inevitability of time marching on. So come to Sunny's in Old City for a revolutionary take on the classic. And try the cheesesteak that Alan Richmond of GQ Magazine named the best in Philadelphia. And declare your inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of cheesiness. Sunny's Famous Steaks, 228 Market. My friends, this is Joe Krause. You've heard me on Philadelphia Radio now for over 20 years, and you know I don't often endorse products or people unless they are real game changers. I want to tell you about Weinerman Pain and Wellness, located in Center City, Philadelphia. And at the end of this short personal endorsement, I want you to consider Weinerman Pain and Wellness. If you are recovering from an injury, if you or a family member has been diagnosed with a disorder that has stopped you in your tracks, Or if you're like me, determined to learn about wellness while getting yourself prepared to stay healthy so you can enjoy the blessings of your family. Remember the name of this warm and caring location, Weinerman Pain and Wellness. Why should you consider Weinerman Pain and Wellness? Because they are who you expect them to be. Weinerman Pain and Wellness on the web at WeinermanPainAndWellness.com. Weinerman Pain and Wellness located at 100 South Broad Street, just south of City Hall. Call Weinerman Pain and Wellness at 215-988-9503. That's 215-988-9503. Call today. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the Philly Labor Rx Injured Workers Pharmacy Network, featuring PPC Pharmacy, First Choice Pharmacy, and Precision Scripts. Providing injured workers with premium products and services from the point of injury through the entire healing process. The Philly Labor Rx Pharmacy Network cares about injured workers. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance, In every corner of the world, no matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. All right, and we are back. Um, I hope you were listening. We had Gabriella Watson. Uh, she uh, is a uh, an adjunct professor at Temple uh, University, and uh, she received her Master of Fine Arts there. But uh, she is debuting her uh, latest documentary, uh, Balba Flowers. It's going to play this Sunday, 11 a.m. at the International House, and she'll be there. She'll be there if you want to speak with her, ask her questions. And so the address is 3701 Chestnut Street. We were kind of given the wrong street. It's not 34th and Chestnut. It's 37th and Chestnut. Make sure you're there. Ask for Gabriella. She'll be on hand. Uh, but now we are going to hear a, a little clip or a track from uh, House of Hamill. This is from their song Daydream. Where were pieces of 
of it all and there we are on the screen far beyond the final frame have we changed it all our difference is the same to be And that is from the song Daydream. We are here with uh, Rose Baldino and Brian Buchanan, uh, House of Hamill. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. All right. Well, listen, Brian's here with his guitar. Rose has her, a violin or fiddle, depending on what you're doing, because you're both violinists and fiddlers, both ca- classically trained and uh, both have a love of the, uh, the, the, uh, the fiddle. Mm-hmm. It's, it's true, yeah. We both, we both started uh, violin lessons and uh, I think piano lessons, both of us, when we were pretty mm-hmm. young. And uh, after a bunch of years of that, right around we, the time we both reached adolescence, we started getting bored of classical music and started looking elsewhere and both fell in love with Irish and traditional music, mm-hmm. independently of one another. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like violin rebellion, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> if there is such a thing. Yeah, yeah so you yeah. don't hold it properly. You make straight sound. <laughs> that's with totally it. correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you dance around. <laughs> okay. Well, well, listen. I mean, it's interesting because um, both of you are in other bands. Is mm-hmm. that right? Yep. That's right. Yeah. Um, I have a traditional Celtic band right here in like the Philadelphia area. We're, we're more based in Lehigh Valley, but it's called Burning Bridget Cleary. Um, mm. And yeah, we've we've done traditional Irish music for the last twelve years. And, uh, yeah, Brian has his own band up in Canada. I moved to Philadelphia about three years ago from Toronto. Yes. And uh, my band is based out of Toronto still. We play actually probably more often in Philadelphia than we do in Toronto. Um, and my band's called Enter the Haggis. It's uh, Celtic rock. Okay. For those who don't know, what is haggis? Haggis is an alleged delicacy um, <laughs> in Scottish culture, which is made from the stomach of a sheep with the innards of a sheep mashed up with oatmeal inside and spices and boiled and then served to you. It's lovely. And mm. yeah. Gabriella, did you know that? Did you have haggis before? Never. Never. Neither is You're not Rose. missing much. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. Rose is born a vegetarian and has oh, never tried okay. haggis. Oh my goodness. For all she knows it's delicious. So where yeah. where where did that name come from? <laughs> Enter the haggis. Probably Scotch. Oh my um, I wasn't. I wasn't around for the naming of the band, and I've been rebelling against it ever since. And, and for Rose, where did Burning Bridget Cleary come from? Uh, we actually found this really interesting story online. My band uh, back in it was like 2006. We found this story about this woman uh, named Bridget. Or, yeah, Bridget Cleary, who was living in a, a place called Tipperary in Ireland mm, in like okay. the 1800s, and she was considered to be the last witch to be burned in oh, Ireland. Oh my goodness! Of course, right. she wasn't a witch. Right, um, right. So she was this really like strong female character mm, from Ireland's history, okay. and the the band was and still is fronted uh, fronted by two uh, female fiddlers. So we thought it was kind of fitting to have a, a strong female character leading the way for us. Right. So so Haggis meets uh, Bridget Cleary, mm-hmm. and we have. <laughs> House of Hamill. <laughs> yeah. Where did the name come from? Uh, House of Hamill is the name of the first fiddle tune that Rose taught me when I moved down to Philadelphia. And it was written by a Philadelphian who was an expat Irishman named mm. Ed Reavy, who moved over to Philadelphia and spent the rest of his life writing a lot of really well-known traditional Irish okay. fiddle tunes. Okay. So you guys uh, uh, met 10 years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, you kept bumping into each other. Mm-hmm. And then one day uh, – well, Burning Bridget Cleary was missing two of its members, and so 
Rose took the stage with you, and House of Hamill basically got its start. Pretty much born on the spot, actually with another Philadelphian, Cheryl Prasker of the band oh, Runa, okay. who okay. Uh, yeah. who also kind of jumped on stage. And we pretty much just made it up for an hour at a, at a music conference in Kansas City. Yeah. And never looked back. And so since you already have your own bands, how did you come up with House of Hamill? Why would you venture into yet another musical endeavor? I think what Brian and I are doing together is is – quite different from what either of our bands are doing like my Mm. band is very strictly like traditional music and it's our own twist on it and brian's band is very more like rock and with like some roots influences and what we're doing is almost like we're still trying to figure out what our sound is because there's like electronic influences Mm. there's folk influences irish influences musical theater influences radiohead influences it's just (laughs) really weird and like twisted and kind of dark so (laughs) yeah we just we're, we're trying to find i guess another outlet you know even from our own outlets and I think neither of us had really played with or started a new uh, official musical project in probably close to a decade. Yeah. And it was it was kind of interesting to just try something from a new direction and mm. with new personnel. And mm-hmm. and, and uh, you have um, you have a concert coming up. I mean, not real soon, but mm-hmm. when when are you guys performing? Yeah, well, we're we have a couple dates uh, in Florida next month, but. The next time we're playing around here is we're playing Steel City Coffee House um, on October 21st in Phoenixville. Oh, okay. So that'll be a lot of fun. We're, we're excited for that. That's as close as we're getting to downtown Philadelphia for in the now. next couple of months. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, October the 24th? First. First. 21st. Yep. 21st. Okay. Yep. And so we're going to offer our listeners, we're going to come up with some kind of a contest, a way to do this, but we are offering, thanks to um, House of Hamill, two autographed CDs. Um and we'll figure out how you're going to win these. I think we'll uh, we'll say that uh, we'll do a drawing from our subscribers. So please uh, make sure that if you're listening and you're not a, a subscriber, go to YouTube.com, In the Know with David O, and subscribe. We will uh, do the drawing, and we will announce the winner next week on the air. Um, so uh, in terms of um, your debut album, Wide Awake, uh, how did that come about and, and what's happening right now? Well, uh, not unlike Gabriella, we actually ran a Kickstarter as well. And uh, between the two of us, I think we've done about six or seven Kickstarters now to fund various projects and various albums. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that was our debut. And uh, we made a bunch of videos to uh, to promote the Kickstarter last year and recorded a good chunk of it in our apartment up in Chestnut Hill, just uh, in our living room. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the cool thing about... You know, living here in the future is we could do things like have a drummer in Toronto record parts for us and have a bass player in New Jersey record parts for us. Right, and, right. Yeah. Um, so, we, yeah, we, we put out that first album back in September of 2016, and we're already hard at work on a follow-up, which we have no idea of a release date for, but we're, ah. we're heading in that direction. Well, let me let me tell our listeners uh, that uh, you're in for a treat because House of Hamill is about to perform live. Yes, we are. Uh, they are going to perform one of their songs, Pound a Week Rise. I don't know what it means, but Pound a Week Rise. It's a, uh, a song. Actually, it's a traditional song that was written back in the early 1900s, um, and it, uh, it covers the – the story and the angst of a, a, a group of coal miners who were ripped off by the mm, coal board right. and promised more money than they were paid. Okay, so here we go. Back up a little bit. Jack, we never see the sky and you're working in the dungeon for a 
bird rises, then with you I will agree to raise up all your wages and give to you fair pay. For I was once a miner and I worked hard in my day. But it's down we go, down below, Jack. We never see the sky and you work in your dungeon for a pound a week, right? Fantastic. We get the fake applause in. There would be applause if there were more people here. <laughs> Listen, a- as we leave, for our listeners, if they want to follow you, if they want to buy your music, where do they go? Uh, they can go to our website, uh, houseofhamill.com, or we're, we're very active on Facebook as well. So it would just be, I guess, ha- be- Hamill with two L's. That's yes, right. Yeah. Okay. M-I-L-L, like Mark Hamill. All <laughs> right. like him. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. And listen, everybody, stay tuned because you're going to learn to play guitar just like that right after this commercial break. You are listening to In the Know with David O. Informative, substantive, intelligent talk radio on 860 AM WWDB. My friends, this is Joe Krause. You've heard me on Philadelphia Radio now for over 20 years. And you know I don't often endorse products or people unless they are real game changers. I want to tell you about Weinerman Pain and Wellness, located in Center City, Philadelphia. And at the end of this short personal endorsement, I want you to consider Weinerman Pain and Wellness. If you are recovering from an injury, if you or a family member has been diagnosed with a disorder that has stopped you in your tracks, or if you're like me, determined to learn about wellness while getting yourself prepared to stay healthy so you can enjoy the blessings of your family. Remember the name of this warm and caring location, Weinerman Pain and Wellness. Why should you consider Weinerman Pain and Wellness? Because they are who you expect them to be. Weinerman Pain and Wellness on the web at WeinermanPainAndWellness.com. Weinerman Pain and Wellness located at 100 South Broad Street, just south of City Hall. Call Weinerman Pain and Wellness at 215-988-9503. That's 215-988-9503. Call today. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the Philly Labor Rx Injured Workers Pharmacy Network, featuring PPC Pharmacy, First Choice Pharmacy, and Precision Scripts, providing injured workers with premium products and services from the point of injury through the entire healing process. The Philly Labor Rx Pharmacy Network cares about injured workers. At any given moment, somewhere in America... 
a baby is taking a first step, a developmental milestone. But for too many parents, a baby's first steps aren't just a milestone. They're a miracle. These are the parents of babies who were born prematurely or with birth defects. It's a crisis affecting more than half a million babies in the United States each year. You can help them by joining volunteers like you who walk in March for Babies. The money you raise funds research and local programs that help babies overcome the challenges of premature birth and birth defects. Together, our steps make stronger, healthier babies a reality for thousands of families. Sign up today at marchforbabies.org to take the steps that help make milestones and even miracles possible. Who will you march for? Introducing the YMCA. What, you already know the Y? Or so you think. Sure, you know the Y for a swim, a workout, even a game of hoops. But did you know we're more than that? We're a cause. When you take your jump shot at the Y, someone else is getting job training. Take a cardio class while kids are in an after-school enrichment program. Practice your downward-facing dog as a teen practices her leadership skills. That's the why. We work with people no matter their age, income, or background and give them the opportunity to learn, grow, and thrive, all with one simple goal in mind, to strengthen our community. And we've got so much more that does just that. So while you might think of the why as that place for lifting weights, we're also about lifting entire communities. Introducing the why. We're so much more than a place. We're a cause. Visit ymca.net slash more. And we are back. Listen, I, I hope you're not just tuning in because you would have missed both the, uh, you know, well, first of all, you would have missed a live performance from House of Hamill. You know, it gets my Irish up. I don't know. That's a great thing about America, right? We, we could all claim whatever we like, all part of the tradition and culture. But I feel the music. It makes me feel like, hey, I'm going down to that dungeon and, uh, you know, all that stuff. So, um, you know, the wonderful thing about music, House of Hamill. Um, you know, they're trying to define what their music is. I guess it's uh, uh, Irish rock, folk, uh, something. Um, you know, but you got to check it out. And uh, they also, we also heard a clip from uh, their CD. And uh, so House of Hamill, check them out. And uh, we heard from uh, Gabriella Watson Arazo. She is a uh, adjunct professor at Temple University, and she will be debuting uh, her film uh, Balba Flowers this Sunday at the International House. 3701 Chestnut Street, 11 a.m. Check it out, 1230. You'll be able to meet her, talk to her about her film. Well, listen, right now we're going to talk to Rob Swift, and he is going to talk about how you can learn the guitar quick. And he must be doing something right because he's got 200,000 uh, subscribers on his YouTube and a million views a month, which I could tell you that is a lot. Rob, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, David. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Listen, Rob, uh, you know, you're a professional musician, producer, and now educator for like, is it 12 years that you've been teaching? Uh, I started in high school, uh, 30 years old now. Um, and uh, I've just been at it ever since. As soon as I got out of school, I started my uh, my company, Swift Lessons, and uh, have been playing in bands and performing uh, particularly around Philadelphia ever since. Yeah, I've seen you perform. I've always enjoyed that. But today you're on kind of as a music teacher, mm. and you were talking before, before the show about teaching people to learn. Uh, yeah, it's, it's my personal opinion um, that our cookie cutter style school systems that we have in the United States don't really teach people how to learn and how to build confidence and how to pick things up systematically. Mm. Uh, I notice um, just from the hundreds and hundreds of people that I've taught, people sit down and they just attack things uh, without any kind of system and in an almost very stressful kind of way. Mm. And uh, so my job is just to break things up into small digestible pieces for people to pick up and uh, slowly build their confidence and uh, find success on the guitar. Now, before you go into a little bit about how you're teaching the guitar, uh, you as a as a person, a musician, as a teacher, what is the magic that you're bringing to your your craft here? Teaching people like me 
to play the guitar. What what are you doing that's special? Well, well, for starters, I was a really bad student. Mm, okay, I could see that. I was. Uh, um, thank you. <laughs> I was always a bad student, and I I, I didn't get good grades <clears throat> in school, uh, and my mind wandered a lot, and so I had a lot of bad habits. But one thing that I really had was an absolute love and obsession for music, mm. and I knew that I wanted to get it down. Um, and so over many many years, I taught myself how to learn. Right. Um, actually, went ended up going to. Uh, uh, college and uh, taking what I had learned from the guitar and found out that I was actually a really good student. Um, and so uh, I, my uh, my approach is to basically just teach people how to learn, um, show them all the things that I picked up just from having all those mistakes all those years and how I fixed it. Wow. And and, and so now you can reach so many people online. Mm-hmm. And, and And how do you do that? Uh, well, I started off teaching uh, private lessons and classes here in Philadelphia. Uh, I still have some great students. Uh, and all the while, while I was teaching these private lessons, I realized that the thing that was missing in a lot of education was multimedia tools. And so uh, my curriculum had uh, an ebook, um, right. a, a lot of different notebooks and, and quizzes and things like that, but also videos that broke down every technique that I wanted to teach to beginners. And the goal in mind was always just to get people from point A, the beginner, absolute beginner level, and then get them up to the intermediate level to the point where they can start being creative and having fun and jamming with friends and you know having those memories that I've always cherished. Now, you'll have to expound on this, but but number one, uh, people can go right now uh, to some of your videos, and they're free. Yes, so there's uh, about 450 free videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, I have stuff that's just for beginners, lots of different playlists. Um, you can learn some very, very beginner-friendly songs, uh, just a few chords. Hey, just four chords, you can play thousands and thousands of tunes. Mm. That's all you need. And um, and then it builds you up and gets you up to the uh, intermediate and advanced levels in a lot of different styles. Right, and 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 then if you want to uh, pay some money, you could pay a dollar a month. That's like twelve dollars a year, and you'll get more. What do you get for a dollar a month? Uh, so um, the dollar uh, a month club was kind of like a tipper club. Right. Um, if you like the videos, you can throw me a tip, and then I, I take that uh, that and throw it back into the channel. Mm-hmm. And I've used that to get a lot of great musicians, a lot of local artists onto the uh, show and improve the equipment that I use to create the, the lessons. But in return, uh, if you support the channel, you get um, quality resources for all my uh, popular YouTube guitar lessons. Wow. And then you could go up to like five or ten? Five and ten. Five gets you even more resources, PDFs, back and tracks. Uh, $10 makes you basically an executive producer of the channel. You get your name and the credits of every single new video that I put up. Wow. And then um, and then there's premium content, which includes some extra lessons, a lot of uh, extra video lessons, and yet more PDFs, back and tracks, and all that good stuff. And the list of resources is growing every single day. I hit this every single day. Yeah, it's a real win-win because not only are you teaching people for free or a dollar a month, you know, and people can give more if they like, but but you're also bringing on other musicians and they're getting exposure to your one million views a month. Absolutely. Uh, so far, I've had um, the amazingly talented Chelsea Mitchell on there, the Levy Drivers, great Philadelphia band, and an uh, actor named uh, Skip James Robinson, who's in the Million Dollar Quartet. He was just on showing us how to play um, uh, a little Johnny Cash. He performs as Johnny Cash in the mm. Million Dollar Quartet. So I'm bringing on actors, I'm bringing on uh, singers, I'm bringing on just an uh, incredible, diverse group of musicians, uh, the kinds of people that live here in Philadelphia. We just have like an amazing uh, music scene here. Wow, fantastic. So you're sitting there with your guitar. Can you show us something and let the listeners hear just a little bit of what you would teach a beginner? Well, a beginner should learn a bunch of three chord songs. I call them easy strummers. Right. And, uh, you know, that might just be three chords. Right there, that's 10,000 different songs. Okay. Right. So, Gabriella, are you getting all this in? Because we're going to make you yeah. play the guitar. Just get sh- my notes. Okay, she's got her notes. All right, let's go. So beginners um, can start off just learning three chords. In this particular case, I'm, uh, I'm playing E major, A major, and uh, a B7 chord, and I'm using what uh, musicians call as a capo to change the key up a whole step. Um, that's musical lingo. Don't worry about any of that. That's another thing that I always recommend is just cut the fat. You know, if you learn something, no matter how small, walk away with that. 
that's a uh, that's one of the the biggest keys to learning is not allowing yourself to become over inundated and overwhelmed. So you learn three chords. You learn a couple songs. Sweet Home Chicago. Learn those classic blues songs that use three chords. You can start off just strumming. Then you can upgrade that and start shuffling. Then you can upgrade that. It's all about layers. You learn something, then you allow it to evolve a little bit by little bit. That was easy. If you were here, you'd be doing it right now. See, so you're on the radio. You can't see this. It was so easy. Yeah. So I, you know, I can't take you from the intermediate level or the beginner level to the intermediate level over the waves. Uh, but I do have those 450 free lessons on YouTube that you can check okay. out. Okay. Right I'm getting the signal that we're coming down on time. We got a couple minutes. So before we go any further, where can people check you out? Uh, YouTube.com slash Swift Lessons. Uh, that's the YouTube channel. I'm on Facebook uh, and on Twitter as Swift Lessons. Uh, and then I'll be performing with my band uh, at the Boot and Saddle on August 10th. Where's the Boot and Saddle? Uh, that's on Broad Street. Um, Below Washington uh, Avenue. Way down there, I think, maybe near Tasker. Near Tasker. All right, check Boot it out. And Boot and Saddle. Very <laughs> famous place. I know what it is when I see it. What date again? Uh, that'll be August 10th. August 10th. Fantastic. Now, show us something uh, for advanced folks. Uh, okay. So um, one of the more advanced techniques that I like to teach is a lot of... Finger picking. All right. How about some leads from some songs? Oh, from some songs uh, off the top of my head? Well, hey, pull something out. Okay, so we got... got, um, little Jimi Hendrix there. Yeah, I teach a lot of different styles, a lot of classic rock, um, a lot of folk. I love Simon and Garfunkel. You'll get, be, be able to find lessons on the boxer and a bunch of other classic tunes that they mm. did. So. so so, basically, you know, learning can be fun. It can be easy to an extent, but as easy as possible and so convenient and affordable with Swift Guitar Lessons. All right. Well, listen, thanks for joining us, and everybody, tune in next week, Tuesday, 2 to 3 on WWDB, and we'll be catching you again uh, next week and, and every week thereafter. This is David O. You're in the know. You've been listening to In the Know with David O. on 860 AM WWDB. Tune in again next Tuesday at 2 p.m. for more informative, substantive, intelligent talk radio with Philadelphia Councilman David O.